<laughs> John Thompson, a reclusive writer seeking inspiration, had rented a remote cabin nestled deep within the woods. The cabin was isolated, surrounded by towering pines and the eerie symphony of nocturnal creatures. As John settled into his self-imposed exile, the isolation began to weigh on him, casting long shadows on his once tranquil mind. Days turned into weeks, and John's only companions were the endless pages of his manuscript and the unsettling silence that enveloped him. The isolation was a double-edged sword. It granted him the solitude he sought, yet it also fueled his growing sense of unease. The forest seemed to hold its breath, as if waiting for something that lurked beyond the edge of perception. As the nights grew longer, John's dreams became plagued by vivid, disturbing nightmares. He would wake in a cold sweat, unable to recall the details of the horrors that had unfolded within his subconscious. The line between dream and reality blurred, and the isolation of the cabin began to gnaw at his sanity. One moonless night, John awoke to a sound, a faint whisper that seemed to originate from the depths of the forest. He dismissed it as a trick of his imagination, but the whispers persisted. They echoed through the cabin, their unintelligible words unsettling and disorienting. John felt as though the very walls were conspiring against him. The whispers grew louder, morphing into ghostly apparitions that danced at the edge of John's vision. Pale figures flitted through the cabin, their faces obscured by shadow. They whispered promises of secrets and revelations, drawing John deeper into their ethereal dance. Desperation gnawed at him as he struggled to comprehend their presence. In a hidden corner of the cabin, John stumbled upon an old diary. Its pages were filled with cryptic, handwritten entries that hinted at a dark history. The diary had belonged to a previous occupant of the cabin, a recluse who had succumbed to the isolation and the whispers that haunted the woods. The diary spoke of a malevolent force that dwelled within the forest, a force that craved company and sought to ensnare souls. John's nights grew increasingly tumultuous. He would wake to find his possessions moved, his manuscript scribbled with cryptic symbols, and his sanity unraveling. He became convinced that an unseen intruder prowled the cabin, a malevolent entity that reveled in tormenting him. The whispers grew more coherent, their voices mocking and malevolent. John's descent into madness accelerated as he grappled with the relentless presence that haunted him. He began to record his experiences in a journal, desperate to maintain a semblance of sanity. The isolation had become a prison, and the cabin felt like a malevolent entity in itself, a place where reality and nightmare collided. One moonless night, John decided to confront the entity that had tormented him. Armed with the diary and a makeshift ritual he had gleaned from its pages, he ventured into the forest, guided only by the eerie glow of a lantern. The whispers grew deafening, and the shadows within the woods seemed to coalesce, taking form and substance. Deep within the forest, John stumbled upon a clearing where the whispers converged into a cacophonous chorus. A spectral figure emerged from the darkness, its features twisted into a grotesque semblance of humanity. It revealed itself as the guardian of the forest, a malevolent entity that had ensnared countless souls over centuries. The entity taunted John, revealing that the isolation was its doing, a method to draw in souls ripe for torment. It had whispered secrets and nightmares, feeding on John's fear and despair. It offered a sinister choice, to join the legion of tormented souls, or to become its unwitting puppet, forever bound to the cabin and the forest. With his sanity hanging by a thread, John made a desperate bargain. He offered his manuscript, a vessel of his creativity and soul, in exchange for release from the entity's grasp. The entity hesitated, its ethereal form shifting in contemplation. In a malevolent twist, it agreed, but not before extracting a piece of John's essence, a fragment of his very being. John returned to the cabin, his spirit broken and his creativity drained. He finished his manuscript, but it was a hollow, lifeless work, a reflection of the emptiness that now consumed him. The entity's whispers faded, but the cabin bore the scars of his ordeal. 
It stood as a haunted place, a sanctuary for lost souls forever bound to its malevolent presence. Years passed, and the cabin's legacy lived on. John, a shadow of his former self, found himself drawn back to the isolation that had shattered his life. The whispers and shadows remained, an enduring reminder of the malevolent force that had ensnared him. He wandered the cabin, a solitary figure forever tormented by the horrors that lurked in the depths of the forest and the recesses of his own mind. The isolation remained, an eternal prison for John's soul. The cabin stood as a testament to the horrors of solitude, a place where reality and nightmare intertwined. As the seasons changed and the forest reclaimed its territory, the whispers of the entity echoed through the woods, waiting for the next unsuspecting soul to venture into the depths of its dark domain. The cabin, hidden deep within the woods, became a place of legend, a cautionary tale told by those who dared to speak of it. The isolation it offered was a seductive trap, luring in those who sought solitude and creativity, only to ensnare them in a never-ending nightmare. And as the world moved on, the cabin remained a dark and foreboding presence, a place where the solitude of the mind could lead to a descent into unending horror. One fateful night, as John's torment reached its zenith, he resolved to break free from the malevolent grasp of the cabin and its entity. Armed with a newfound determination, he began to dismantle the very walls that had witnessed his descent into madness. As John tore through the cabin's interior, the entity's whispers swelled into a crescendo of rage. Shadows coalesced, attempting to thwart his efforts. But John's desperation fueled his strength, and he shattered the windows, allowing the moonlight to flood the cabin. In the moonlight, the entity manifested in its true form, a writhing mass of darkness and despair. It lunged at John, attempting to drag him into its shadowy abyss. But John fought back with a ferocity born of years of torment. He wielded the diary, invoking the same ritual he had used to make his ill-fated bargain. The cabin trembled as an otherworldly battle raged within its walls. Shadows clashed with the spectral entity, and the very foundation of the cabin seemed to quiver. John's determination was his greatest weapon, and with a final incantation, he banished the entity from the cabin. With the entity's departure, the whispers that had tormented John faded into silence. The cabin, once a place of malevolence and despair, stood empty but no longer haunted. John had paid a steep price for his freedom, but he had reclaimed his sanity and his soul. The cabin trembled as an otherworldly battle raged within its walls. Shadows clashed with the spectral entity, and the very foundation of the cabin seemed to quiver. John's determination was his greatest weapon, and with a final incantation, he banished the entity from the cabin. John emerged from the cabin, a changed man. He had survived the isolation and the horrors it had harbored. As he made his way back to civilization, he carried with him the knowledge of the malevolent force that lurked in the depths of the forest a force that thrived on solitude and despair. The cabin trembled as an otherworldly battle raged within its walls. Shadows clashed with the spectral entity, and the very foundation of the cabin seemed to quiver. John's determination was his greatest weapon, and with a final incantation, he banished the entity from the cabin. John's experience in the cabin became the basis for his most chilling and haunting novel. It was a story of isolation and horror a cautionary tale for those who sought solitude without knowing the price it could exact. And as the world read his words, they shivered with the realization that the horrors of the human mind could be far more terrifying than any supernatural entity. Years passed, and the cabin remained an empty and silent sentinel in the woods. It had been cleansed of its malevolence, but the memory of the horrors that had transpired within its walls lingered. The forest, once a place of solace, now held an eerie, somber resonance, a testament to the enduring power of isolation and the darkness that could lurk within the human psyche.